Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Planet IMAX. It's great um, to have you here. I'm, I welcome all of you on behalf of the German Convention Bureau and the great panelists, which I'm going to introduce to you in a few minutes. My name is Matthias Schulze. I'm the Managing Director of the German Convention Bureau, and we are going to talk about what's next in the constantly changing business events industry, especially in Germany these days. Um, allow me to start with a few slides before we um, dive deeper within our panel uh, with all the great panelists we have invited for today's um, um, session. Um, the current situation is um, not new for all of us. That's what we experienced at the moment for a few months. It wasn't able to run any face-to-face -face events at all, but now, especially in Germany, Steady, slowly but steadily, we are coming back to live events. We have rules and regulations in place in Germany that make it possible to run business events again. Um, but the time since we did not experience any face-to-face -face events, um, most of the participants, the potential participants, were used to use um, technologies like Zoom, WebEx, GoToMeeting, you name it, in order to communicate and collaborate with their communities. And we fully believe in face-to-face -face events, and we believe that face events, events, face-to-face events, face events will come back um, again, but they will look different. Um, they will look totally different. They will be hybrid events because we learn to use um, those digital tools. But on the other hand, we also um, um, missing the face-to-face -face meetings. And what we believe is that in the future, a huge percentage of all meetings taking place will be hybrid meetings. So what does that mean um, for all of us in the business events industry and especially in Germany, which um, uh, has great rankings when it comes to safety and um, uh, hygiene measurements when it comes to business events? Um, we in Germany believe that meetings made in Germany only work when we are able to connect them digitally and face-to-face. -face. Why is that? Because we believe that the connection on the one hand is the ability to bring people together, to create great atmospheres, and on the other hand, to connect people virtually, meaning to involve and interconnect with those who are not able, who are not allowed uh, to travel to Germany or within Germany at the moment. That's uh, very sustainable approach from our perspective. And I have invited um, four great panelists um, for today's um, session, which I'm going to introduce to you in a minute. It's uh, Janine, Inga, Carola, and Mark. And first of all, beforehand, before we start, a big thank you uh, for your time today. So I stop now sharing my screen, and now we should have all of you in full picture um, here with the community. Well, it's uh, great to have you here. I'm going to introduce um, you one by one, starting um, with uh, Janine David um, Steinhardt, who is the Deputy Director of the Munich Convention Bureau. And uh, you have uh, experienced um, uh, working in the hotel industry as well as with an agency. And now you are um, running the Munich Convention Bureau together with your team. So you have um, great insights in the different areas and sectors of our industry, and I'm very much looking to uh, your insights in a minute. Um, a new kid on the block is Inga Siegelmann uh, from the Frankfurt Convention Bureau. She has not uh, long ago started um, with the Frankfurt Convention Bureau and is not uh, only looking after the American market, but also after the Chinese market. And you are very much in the new, in the new um, uh, social media um, marketing strategy involved of the German, uh, of the Frankfurt Convention Bureau, and of course also of the German Convention Bureau, because the Frankfurt Convention Bureau is a member of the German Convention Bureau, as all of you are here. Um, and another um, great panelist for today is Karuda um, Schröder um, from InterCongress. Um, she's a partner at InterCongress and uh, responsible for the convention business within that PCO. You have uh, you are very experienced um, in the event and meeting planning, especially in the medical congresses and conferences. And I'm happy to say that you are also a long-term and long-lasting volunteer member of the German Convention Bureau's Board of Directors, and you're supporting us um, since many years now. Thank you for that, Carola. 
And last but definitely not least, um, I'd like to welcome the only gentleman in our panel discussion for today. It's Mark Spivey, truly an expert, especially in the hotel and hospitality industry, with many, many, many years of experience in different hotel chains like um, for example, the Steigenberger Hotels now since many years with the Maritime Hotels, uh, one of the leading hotel chains in Germany when it comes to business events. So thank you for your time. And as you can see, we have great um, speakers here um, invited for today's um, panel discussion. Let's start now with, um, with the questions uh, we have prepared for you. And before we start talking about the, um, the new now, I think, Let's, I know none of you has a crystal ball, uh, of course, but um, let's uh, have a view um, on how the meetings industry may look like in five years. Um, I'm interested in uh, learning from you, um, Janine, how that looks from a perspective of, of a destination. What's, what's your insights or what's your ideas of your views and perspectives of how the meeting of tomorrow in five years may look like? Yeah. Yes, first of all, I like to travel myself a lot, of course, and I also like to welcome uh, visitors in Munich, to Munich, but um, this is why I also imagine that a meeting industry will be with traveling in five years uh, possible again. And therefore, I also think that hybrid meetings, as you just said before, Matthias, are the way we have to go, because this is a great way where people can come and meet on a face-to-face -face basis, but also the ones which are not able to come can join the meetings, the congresses, and at the same time, I think this is really a huge chance also to um, uh, generate a higher outreach of attendees. Okay, very good point. Thank you. And that's what meeting planners are looking for, of course, um, to increase the reach um, of um, the message they would like to spread through an event, for example, as a tool for communication, especially when it comes to associations and corporations. Well, from a Frankfurt point of view, um, do you agree with uh, Janine or do you have different strategies uh, in your mind when it comes to business <laughs> events in five years' time? Well, I would totally agree to Janine and what you said before, Matthias, that, well, in like five years, meeting planners will be even more experienced in designing hybrid or digital events. And we are already seeing this development here in Frankfurt as we get RFPs asking for hotels or locations where hybrid events are possible. And on the other side, um, we are seeing our hotel and location partners already preparing for that. So we still strongly believe that face-to-face -face events will come back because there's nothing as much inspiring as meeting someone in person. And this is literally what every single one of my US planners I worked with told me. Uh, and all of these detailed hygiene and safety concepts that our hotels and locations worked out in the last month um, will certainly still be valid in a modified form after the crisis. So there will be various changes in the next five years that might be scary at first, but here at the Frankfurt Convention Bureau, we see the digital as a great addition to live events because virtual or hybrid events can be time and cost savings. Um, also hybrid events in particular um, increase reach and can address new target groups, for example, like younger generation. Uh, and they're helpful regarding the aspect of sustainability. So all in all, we see future meetings, as you said before, Matthias, also as a combination of personal encounter with new digital additions. Okay, perfect. So, so you are um, totally agreeing on the new marketing campaign of the German Convention Bureau, um, <laughs> which is called At the Heart of Future Events and showing exactly those two um, different approaches, the personnel, as well as the digital. Um, thank you for um, your insights. Um, Inga, Carola, um, you are sending out a lot of bits. So um, what's your view on the current situation and especially on business events within the next five years? Oh, you're still unmuted. Okay, here I am. Uh, well, surprise, surprise to me, the future is hybrid as well. We already see a combination of leisure and work at our home office. We have seen seamless transitions between education and entertainment, 
bringing up edutainment. Um, and I predict a wide range of mixed formats to come. There will be physical meetings, of course. There will be digital, they will last. And um, let's call them digital, that is mixed meetings, hybrid meetings, that will be the future for me. Well, very good point, uh, Carola. I like the expression digital, which is uh, <laughs> much more precise than um, hybrid. Um, so because it's, it's a combination of both, of a physical meeting and the digital component. Um, Mark Spivey from London, from, from your perspective as um, someone um, heading the international sales department of an um, hotel chain, what do you think about um, business events in five years and what's your opinion um, on um, hybrid or digital meetings? Uh, thank you very much, Matthias. Firstly, uh, Inga, Janini and Carola, completely right in what they say, how they see things evolving in the next five years. Um, we need to get back to face-to-face -face meetings. Obviously, from a hotel perspective, that's what I'm going to say. But I am a realistic uh, or a realist in, in a lot of areas that digitally we are moving in a different direction. It's a bit of a crash course what's happened in the past three months, six months of all what Zoom meetings or go to meetings and all these type of platforms that we've had where it's possible. We do see that that is a future area. Um, we do see that the face to face has to come back. It has to complement each other. Um, but I do see that from a size point of view, meetings will become smaller. Globally, international meetings as we knew them in the past will have certain market segments or industry segments that will still go ahead with that. But we will see certain industry segments that are more technically advanced, technically feeling the way to go forward, that they'll do their meetings in a virtual reality. So we, we've got to play a little bit of both sides. Um, from an aesthetic point of view, we are people. We interact with each other. This is a fantastic platform to reach out via IMEX, via all the different things. But we do need to get back to Frankfurt and Las Vegas and actually meet each other in person. And that's where we connect. And that's where not only friendships, but business relationships are made. And without that, it's very difficult, even in a hybrid form, to achieve those circumstances. And I look forward to going back to Munich. I look forward to going back to Frankfurt. I look forward to going back to our hotels, equally working with Intercongress and, and all these people even more than what we've done in the past, because that is the real future that keeps us together. Well, that's a very good point, Mark, and thank you for sharing um, your opinions with us, and uh, I fully, un uh, fully agree. Um, Harvard University recently published a research about the power of business travel, and business travel um, helps to drive the economic power of nations. And that's even proven uh, through Harvard University. And I think um, um, that's what we're all looking for. We need to get back to face-to-face -face meetings. And that's most important um, for all involved in the entire um, um, delegate uh, journey. Um, but we need to fulfill a few targets, uh, the topics and, and, um, and tasks. Um, to get there um, from from now to in five years. From your opinion, um, what's important uh, to have in place right now to get back to, on the one hand, face-to-face -face meeting, but on the other hand, also in order to get prepared for hybrid meetings? So what's from a from, uh, um, hotel uh, perspective, what's um, the task you have to fulfill in order to get prepared for that new normal? Um Technically, we need to be more advanced. Firstly, firstly, that's uh, for every country out there, um, not just Germany. Germany is well advanced, but still the components of actually what the requirements will be. And also, from a technical point of view, streaming and people signing up to be part of a stream, um, there will be, uh, under the GPR, on the data side of things, things need to change. So. It's not as straightforward as people understand it's going to be or has been in the past because track and trace, leaving your data, leaving your information, this has to have a proper system in place. And I think that going back to what you just said beforehand, uh, Matteo, it's a very important thing that Harvard said business travel. I think that governments, and we're talking governments here, Germany's got 
a pretty good government. Um, but governments need to work very closely together and have to understand more and more the importance of global events, what the event industry brings money-wise, financially, industrial-wise, to those countries involved. And I think that we sometimes get clumped together with um, hospitality, which is hotels, of course, but the events, I'm talking about the events, the money that that brings to a country, I don't think there is a, a real thought process by a lot of governments that they need to start really supporting this and moving this in the right direction, albeit health and safety is number one. Yeah. Okay. Thank. Thank you, Mark. Um, a very important topic is, and that's what uh, was from the very beginning, um, supported by the German government um, to um, have clear rules and regulations in place, whether a meeting take place is able to take place or not. And that's what we have in all our 16 states in Germany. We have clear rules and regulations in place. What needs to be done in order to run a business event? Um, the good. Uh, thing is that business events are ready uh, to be back in Germany and that we have all those uh, rules and regulations in place and the most important thing now is to build trust to show that we are ready to host these events to all the potential customers and to all the potential participants and that's um, why I'm more than happy that uh, Germany receives um, best scorings in all the rankings when it comes to the way how we deal um, with the pandemic uh, in Germany in, in, in certain areas, not only in terms of our health system, but also within the public um, life and especially when it comes to business events. And what I like to, to learn a little bit from you, uh, Carola, now is what do we need to do now right now um, in order to get prepared for the new now when it comes for example to hygiene uh, standards or for all the systems in place which um, guarantees safe business events in Germany? Yes well I think that we have done a great job every location every hotel I have seen and talked to um, they had um, put some safety and hygiene concepts into place and they um, published them and this is a very very good job and this is this is the basis for everything on top so what we need now is um, a flexible scalable service we need um, safety for the people that they can um, have free cancellation, that they can change the reservations, be it with the event, be it in the hotels. Um, we need that, that service, which is um, um, at the basis of everything. And we need agile settings and, around, and surroundings, like multi-space and multi-place um, surroundings. This is a huge um, prospect, of course, that can't be done within one year, but this is the, uh, the future need. And of course, you named it already, Mark, we need to understand technology. We have to differentiate what is the added value of augmented reality, of virtual reality, of artificial intelligence. Not everything is suits every event. So we need to know better our technologies. Yeah, very good point, um, Carola. This is one of the reasons why the German Convention Bureau um, initiated the uh, Innovation Alliance Future Meeting Space, which um, helps all the meeting and event planners out there um, to get all the um, technology-related information with the latest technology which is in place, which can be used for meetings and events now, but also in the future. And for those of you who are interested to learn more about it, um, we will share um, um, the website with you it's wwwfuture slash meeting space.com and there you will find all the um, latest information um, about um, technology when it comes to meetings and events. Um, yeah, um, Janine and um, Inga, from a destinations perspective, um, how can you support business um, uh, event planners um, in getting all the information? Um, in having all the information in place, which um, Carola just mentioned. And um, of course, that means we all need to have an open and transparent relationship with all our customers. That's uh, the first hand uh, most important attitude. Um, but I think that's what we all are looking for. But um, what's, the, what's your approaches uh, when it comes to communication with your customers and how can you help? 
Yeah, as you just mentioned, communication is the key, I would say. This is why we're really in close contact with all our partners here in Munich, because things are changing so fast and we really need to learn and adapt uh, new solutions that we can provide then to the clients asking for help. And this is, for me, a very important soft fact that we try to intense our consulting service from the Convention Bureau side. Because people, as you just said, maybe are planning an event um, in, in one uh, country and then maybe in another one, and uh, there are totally different rules. So we need to be the consultants really helping um, and advising what uh, rules we have to stick to right now and what we need to adjust in order to make that event really the one that they want to organize. So that's um, one of the key roles of the destination marketing organizations to be a consultant, to give advice uh, to those who are looking for business events uh, in Germany. And you have the best and state of the art information um, in your regions and cities. So Inga, what's, uh, what's your plan uh, on that? Yeah, we talked about that question a lot here at the Frankfurt Convention Bureau and also talked about, and we think about our role as a CVB in this new situation um, because we realize that the needs of event planners and especially their expectations towards us are changing from mediation to more like um, inspiration. So we are positioning ourselves still as a consultant, um, but also kind of like a, a trendsetter, a trend scout, as well as a source of inspiration for our planners. And so the aim is to be the first point of contact for all stakeholders within the destination. And the focus is kind of shifting from pure sales to holistic destination management. And this requires a new understanding of roads, also new approaches to solutions and the development of new competencies. So especially when it comes to digital skills. Okay, perfect. That's a, um, a great example, which leads me to the next question, um, Inga. Um, that was already an example on what Frankfurt uh, started, what kind of initiative Frankfurt started. Any other initiatives um, from the rest of the panel, which you have started, um, um, especially uh, during the last weeks and months, which uh, you would like to share with us? Um, maybe Mark, what, what about the hotel um, industry and especially the Maritime Hotel Group? What, what was a, one of the initiatives which you have started in order to support your customers? Um, well, the customers from a, from a perspective of communication is key, um, as Inga and, and Janini and, and Carola and yourself have said. Um, it is about communication. Now, 16 states, Germany has a unique role in that. Each state does have different laws on, on the size of the meetings that take place. Not unlike any other country and other, and other countries that do have states, like in the US and places like that. Um, from a hotel perspective, we are governed by the state laws applicable uh, where our hotels are. So if I'm just specifically now speaking for Germany, then it is geared to what is in Berlin is the norm. We have to adapt to the Berlin norm or in Bavaria, if we've got a property which we do in Munich or in Hessen, Frankfurt, wherever the hotels are, we, we're geared towards the state laws. Um, from an aspect uh, which I think is very important that people understand, uh, German hotels reopened in the main, the back end of May. So there was about a six week closure on hotels. Um, some other countries, uh, and I'm not talking out of face, I'm based in London, so I can talk about the UK, are not even open. So we're ahead of the sphere when it comes to how we want to handle events at this precise moment. Ahead of big countries that are well known for meetings. So that, that's a, a big crux already. Um, and I think that there, the new norm on health and safety is very important. Hotels, um, I just uh, did a, an operation just to look what meetings we had in one of our Berlin hotels, bearing in mind that September, October is peak for conference business. Um, we've just done three events this week, or this week, at the end of September, beginning of October. Uh, one of our hotels in Berlin has just done three events uh, that will take place this week for over 300 people each event. Now, some of that is government orientated and others. That just proves how we've adapted to the new norm. 
um, from a health and safety. In Germany, it's one meter fifty, the, uh, the difference between people. Some countries, it's two meters. Some countries, it's one meter. It, it really depends here. Some cities have already done trade shows. So caravan just took place in Dusseldorf. Yes, in a reduced capacity, only 35% of its norm, but it still took place. It still happened. And this is what we really need to communicate out there into the industry that Germany is open for business and is doing business, admittedly, in a reduced form. And what Corolla said uh, at the very beginning of her start, um, there is a new norm. It's going to be new contract terms. It's going to be, uh, you know, new litigation. It's going to be all sorts of things that we, like Inga and Janini just said, and the German Convention Bureau, especially in the U.S., with having the U.S. office over there and in China uh, with Heng Hong and, and all the team there. It's very important that we are brought into task here, that people feel confident to talk to us and say, look, what, what's the real situation out here? Because you can't be messing here. It's got to be done in the proper way. So open for business, Germany. We're operating and we're doing events already. We're ahead of the game. Well, um, we are not at the end, but that was already a great um, <laughs> speech for for, <laughs> for 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 the end of our discussions. Uh, thank you, Mark Spivey, um, for for your insights. Um, a last question regarding um, what's new in the market, or what what kind of initiatives have you started, Janine? What what happened uh, in, in in Munich regarding uh, new initiatives and uh, new concepts? Yeah. Actually, um, I'd like to mention here our own initiative, our own first hybrid meeting that we're about to organize next uh, next week, and it's um, it's our annual event for our Munich, like the ambassadors of our Munich uh, universities. So these are professors, which are normally um, working with science and research, and are not really much into the details of event management. And this is why we thought it's very important to show them how to go on and move on with event management, Congress management on a hybrid level. And this is why we set up our own hybrid event. And this is, of course, first of all, knowledge management that we're doing. But what I also experienced by organizing and seeing how it developed is that we're going through the whole organization process ourselves, which is so important because if you have not gone through it all yourself, you cannot really show others and give inspirational ideas how to develop new formats. That's a great um, um, contribution, Janine, and, and that's exactly what we also tried to um, do with our Borderless Communication Congress, which took place two weeks ago. That was a similar initiative where we started uh, a, uh, organized a congress which took place in different places in the world at the same time and they were all interconnected with each other but it was also uh, possible to follow um, as a viewer uh, the convention or the congress uh, from all around the world so that's what we all have to practice that's what we all have to understand that's what you all um, said in the very beginning we have to understand how technology works we have to understand these new concepts otherwise we are not um, the best consultants uh, in in these areas and that's what we always try to do in germany to be ahead and to better understand uh, the business of tomorrow and to be ready with new business models with new products with new services and all of course under strict hygiene and safety rules and regulations and i think rules and regulation is something you know how to um, proceed with in Germany. Uh, Mark, you just mentioned it. Uh, mm -hmm. Carole, any uh, insights from your side uh, uh, regarding some initiatives you have started um, during the corona crisis? Sure. As an agency, our role is to advise, plan and organize events. So first of all, we had to screen various new platforms from app to avatars, from animation to 3D. Everything is on the market now. Um, and we have to, um, well, observe what is going to establish um, the, the standards. And then, of course, we tested uh, different concepts like TV events, like digital at home uh, concepts. We have, uh, we see a physical restart now in the autumn and we are very happy um, to have some new uh, medical conferences now starting, but they all have a, a hybrid fallback. So um, safety, security is on the head of all. Um, we established a think tank, 
with our experts, with our providers and with our customers um, to refine new tools and to communicate them. Our customers are mainly associations, so they don't have um, the, the resource to make that um, themselves and our sponsors are corporate, so we have to, to bring those together. This is uh, quite a thing that we try to do now. Well, that's a um, good point. I like um, your approach of a new kind of collaborations um, um, to, to, to cooperate also intersectoral uh, between different sectors, between different companies, between different corporations and partners. And I also like your approach um, that we need to learn from other um, areas, from other sectors, like for example, from the TV and entertainment sector to better understand how to produce a hybrid meeting for the um, viewers for those who are not able to attend to attend in person. Perfect. That was um, great insights from all of you. Um, uh, before we come uh, to an end, I'd like to ask one last question and please um, keep your answer as short as possible um, to make uh, the, uh, to make it happen that this um, session ends in time because that's what we um, are seen for in Germany. Good. Um, my last question um, is about, um, do you have any advices um, for your colleagues in the industry, for other stakeholders working in the business events sector um, in, in these days? What, what is your advice and what would you like to share with the community? Well, let's start with Inga. Of course. So I would say it is very important to be flexible and to react spontaneously to unforeseen things. Uh, be open to new technological developments and be curious to learn new things. Also, I would say it is important to be creative and to keep in mind that not every new idea has to be thought through uh, down to the last detail. And yeah, this would be my advice. Okay, super. Um, Carola, what is your advice? Well, facing disruptions like pandemics, fires and floods make conventions sustainable. Develop safe and healthy concepts and aim at resilience to force majeure. Very good point. Thank you, Carola. Um, Janine, any ideas? I would say, yes, I would say learning from each other keep up the communication, also talk to other event planners, maybe other corporates or talk to the CVBs. We're always there to help. And I think a positive mindset is most important nowadays. Well, a positive mindset is a very great um, approach and I think more important than ever. And the positive mindset leads me directly to Mark Spivey. Thank you very much. Well, Inga and Janine and Carola pretty much said uh, from, from a perspective of how they see things coming. I'm no different. I think that communication is key and communication is not just one way. It works the other way as well. So that's, that's you know, there is an expectancy that we the stakeholders give out communication. It's also good event planners, be they in the US or in Belgium or in the UK or in Germany, domestically or Switzerland or the corporates themselves, they should reach out to the people that really know what's going on here and, and, and talk to the people. And they've got the right to do that. And they can talk to you, Matthias. They can talk to Janini, Inga, Carola, myself. It's about knowing who to talk to. So it's not just one way. Don't expect communication to go. You've got to be also open to communicate yourself. And that's, that's where I would leave it. Super. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Janine. Thank you, Carola. And thank you, Inga, for an amazing uh, panel discussion. Thank you all for following us. And um, we only can succeed, we only will succeed when we all cooperate and collaborate. Germany is ready for any collaboration and um, happy to see you soon, ideally in person.